go into this side of my tattoo. I, I did forget one tattoo I have, and it's an interesting tattoo. So first of all, when you get finger tattoos, they fade really, really fast. So I need to go get this touched up. But on my fingers is the letter S-E-H-V-N, which is pronounced seven, S-E-H-V-N, seven. This is actually the name of my unborn child. When I was a dumb, young, 18, 19 something year old, um, I got drunk with my best friend at the time, who was a girl, and we wind up hooking up and she got pregnant. And she, we decided because we were such good friends that um, she would keep it and we would keep it. And me, I'm dumb in 18, 19, being like, yeah, I'm gonna be a dad. She wound up having a miscarriage, uh, only like two months in. I wanted to name the child, whether it was a boy or girl, seven. Because when I was young, I must have been real dumb, but I, that's how I used to spell the number seven. I would spell it S-E-H-V-N. And um, everybody in my family used to say like, oh my God, like we think that's cool. And uh, that's always stuck with me. And so I totally forgot about the situation. She moved on. She has an amazing husband and kids. and. And I, and I hadn't seen her in almost 10 years. And I ran into her um, not that long ago and it just brought back all these old memories. And I was literally like, oh, wow. And so I was just, I wanted to get this because I felt like that happened because I wasn't ready to be a dad. And I want this to also be a reminder to me that I, I need to be, before I can be worthy of having a child, I need to be worthy of that child. And that's why I got seven as a reminder for that. So now for my left arm. Um, so this one's going to be a little bit hard for me to talk about. And um, oh, so I need to put a disclaimer out first before I talk about this. Um, because I know more than likely my mom is going to see this video. So this disclaimer is for you, mom. Um, I just want you to know that I love you. I don't blame you. I don't hate you. I don't resent you. And the reason why I talk about these things and the reason why I'm opened up about it is because I've been able to help people in their lives. Um, little thing about me is Growing up, my grandfather put me in counseling to help me deal with my issues. And as an adult, I started mentoring, whether I was going to anonymous AA and NA classes and just saying, hey, I would like to tell you my story about my mom. So maybe it'll help you and inspire you to stay clean because of how it affects your children. So mother, I just because I know you might see this, I love you. So, so starting the story, um, this arm is dedicated to my mom. It's the good, the middle, and the bad, I guess you could say. Um, when I was 15, I was living with my mom in Montclair, and uh, uh, our apartment got raided, and she went to jail. I went to go live with my dad who at the time had got his life together. And my dad, I love my dad. Um, you know, he wasn't there much of my childhood, but when he did come back into my life, he, he stepped up and he's been an amazing father to my younger siblings. Um, so I love you dad, if you, if you watch this. Um, so I went to go live with my dad. My mom was in jail, in and out. So my mom's always been in and out of jail. Fast forward, I graduate, still don't really know where my mom is. Um, I tried dancing, I tried this, I tried that. And when I was 20, 21, my mom was actually released. The judge, I wasn't able to help my mom when I was younger. I was 15, how am I gonna help my mom? My mom's always been in and out of my life. So when I was 20, 21, I told my mom, because the judge said, okay, if we're gonna let you out, you have to go through an eight-month um, probation period where we're sending you to a woman's shelter 
and you need to prove to us that you're able to be released out into the public. So she went to go live at a woman's home. I told her that if she could get her life together, I wanted my I wanted my younger siblings to have the mom I never had. And so I told her if she could get her life together, I would I would get a regular job and I would take care of her. I'd get a two bedroom apartment, she could come live with me. And Raja was one of the people that helped me to make that decision and mentor me on the beauty industry is always it doesn't matter where you're at the beauty beauty industry is always going to be here but if you don't go and take a chance to help your mom you're going to resent that forever and so i decided and i got a job working at the target distribution warehouse in fontana i was i was there for seven years and i drive i drove forklifts and threw boxes and trailers I was the literally only openly gay guy. There were some questionables, but I was the only openly gay guy. I wanted to becoming a trainer there. I, I really loved that job. <laughs> but I was, and so I did that Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 12 hour shifts. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I, I was working at Mac. But what it did is it allowed me to get um, a two bedroom apartment so that when my mom got out, I could, um, uh, have her move in with me and so when that happened i got um this one right here which is a japanese koi fish swimming upstream um because that means good luck and um you know i needed that <laughs> it was a very big step for me but i really wanted to be able to do that for her and give her a new life so she was clean for a couple years she was good it was great <laughs> it was awesome my little brothers were around more Ringo and Andrew <laughs> she started getting into different habits that fell into her old habits and she started doing things that I didn't agree with and um, uh, one of the so she wound up going back to her old lifestyle and I was working so much, so many years that I just, I couldn't do it anymore. And to this day, the hardest day of my life is when I had to go into her room where she was already crying because she knew it was, it was gonna happen. And I had to tell her that I can't take care of her if she can't take care of herself. It was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. her I love her but I love myself more and I wind up packing up everything and I moved to Riverside to kind of mentally get myself together because it was really hard and so when that happened I got a Japanese cherry blossom tree because that means starting over and it was the hardest thing I had to do and it was the hardest part about all of that was I felt like a failure. You know, I, I tried really hard and just to see her, just to see her crying, it was literally the, one of the toughest things, but I knew it all had to be for a reason. And I knew it was her path and her life journey. And it was it was mine too and so I wind up leaving um, I moved to Riverside and then I eventually got my life together and I decided to move to Los Angeles <laughs> started um, getting asked by companies to do speeches whether it be as a keynote speaker and if you guys don't know I'm I do a lot of uh, I work uh, I consult a lot of companies uh, cosmetics companies um, development marketing business branding um, but I started getting asked to speak and I 
started mentoring again. And I realized that everything that I went through was to prepare me for the people that I could help. If you don't know the story of the koi fish, um, what it is is uh, condensed down. Is it Instead of taking the easy way, it takes the hard way. And when it gets to the top of the waterfall, the gods turn it into a dragon so that it can help other people. I felt that was the reason why I went through all that. I've spent many nights with friends just literally talking about this. And, and, and I realized that the, the best thing about all of that is the people I've been able to connect with. I felt that my life had come full circle because out here I've met so many people that have the same issues in life whether it directly affects them or somebody they know. And so I decided to get the dragon um, as coming a full circle of this whole story and why it happened and hoping that it happened for a greater reason. And, oh God. <laughs> but, um, you know, I do wish my mom to be back in my life at one point, but I'm, I don't judge her, I don't blame her. And I'm grateful that I have this story to tell people because I have literally, you know, stood in front of hundreds of people and who came to see me because of my glitter eyes. And I talked about this and my family. And then I wind up talking to all these people at the end of, you know, who are waiting for me in a line and, and they don't talk about makeup. They say, you know, I know my uncle has this, you know, my brother has this, I suffered from this. I used to use, I used to do this, I used to do this. So the fact that I've been able to wear my life on my sleeves and connect with people is the reason why I think tattoos are such a beautiful thing is because maybe not for everybody, but for me, they tell a story of who I am and who are the people that have inspired me, whether it be from good places or bad places. Whew, oh my God, that was... That was intense. Oh, God. And, you know, I'm just going to put that out there that I was so nervous about doing this. So I hope I didn't come off as a big old drama queen. <laughs> but because that's not the case. It's um, I, I think it's just necessary. I think there's so many taboos ta about tattoos. And, you know, there's some people who, you know, get tattoos because they just like the way the picture looks. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But I really did want to share. And I hope you guys got to know a little bit about me. I really hope um you liked it because <laughs> believe me i've had a couple glasses of wine before this because i was kind of nervous thank you so much and you know the same old spiel hope you like it share it if you're not subscribed please subscribe just thank you i don't know what else to say but until next time peace